Hey y'all, I've done a lot of Pokemon challenges on this channel, but I've yet to do the OG starters. So for the next four weeks, I'll be covering the four Gen 1 starter Pokemon. And first up is beating Pokemon Red using only one Bulbasaur. As usual, the rules are I can only use Bulbasaur in battle, and I can't use any items in battle. By the way, if you like this kind of content and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and check out more of the videos on my channel. Bulbasaur is mostly known for being the starter Pokemon that everyone claims is the worst. But if you look at the stats in Move Pool, well, I mean, it's not terrible. It's a starter, so the stats are meant to be bad because the game assumes that you're going to let it evolve. I mean, only a crazy person would purposely try to beat the game with just a Bulbasaur, right? Wrong. I'm here to clear Bulbasaur's name and reputation. This little guy, I think, will surprise you. Off of Professor Oak's lab, I used the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Bulbasaur with Bulbasaur so that the rival will pick Charmander. You might be thinking, why not just play the actual game and not use the Randomizer? Well, I play these challenges on an actual cartridge and using patches allows me to save a separate file so I can keep my original file from childhood safe and sound. Bulbasaur is an herbaceous dinosaur, so I nicknamed mine Land Before Time. Bulbasaur starts off with just Tackle and Growl. Both of these kind of suck for Bulbasaur, and I will be replacing them the very first chance that I get. Not a good start for me trying to prove Bulbasaur deserves respect, but still, it's good enough to beat the rival Bubs during our very first battle. And you might be thinking right now, Oh, Brock's gonna be easy because you have Vine Whip, bleh, bleh, bleh. Well, Brock is easy, but I actually beat him without using Vine Whip. I entered the gym at level 9 with Tackle, Growl, and Leech Seed. Geodude alternates between Tackle and Defense Curl, and after lowering its attack with Growls, Bulbasaur heals more health with Leech Seed than Geodude's Tackle does in damage. Onyx is even easier to take out than Geodude, because it likes to use Bide, which does no damage as long as we don't hit Onyx, so it's a perfect opportunity to get plenty of turns for Leech Seed recovery. This method takes a lot longer than it would had we just learned Vine Whip, but I'm trying to do this with the minimum levels required, so I'm doing things the hard way. This is all part of the Bulbasaur Redemption arc. After traversing Mount Moon, I tried taking on the rival Bubs in Cerulean City, but he was kind of too tough. So instead, I try something much easier and take on Misty at the gym. Her Water-type Pokémon take a lot of damage from Vine Whip, so it's not long before we've pounded her Starfish and won ourselves the Cascade Badge. Bulbasaur levels up and learns Poison Powder, which just helps to rack up passive damage in addition to Leech Seed though it's not the most useful powder move that we'll get in this run. After beating Misty, I can't go any further without beating the rival Bubs, and this is one of the most frustrating battles ever. Bulbasaur usually doesn't even make it past the Pudgeotto, so I'm not able to win until I replace Tackle with Bide. Bide lets us deal double the damage we take, but that's tough too, because Pudgeotto often spams Sand Attack. Once we get past it though, Abra provides free Leech Seed recovery, although Rat Attack does come out and usually do a lot of damage, and we keep losing to Charmander. Until this one battle where it just decides not to use Ember. I'm getting flashbacks to Rage from the Snorlax video. After the rival Bubs, we head to the SSN in Vermilion City to take on the rival Bubs. Bulbasaur learned Razor Leaf by level up, and we taught it the TM for Body Slam. Razor Leaf has a high critical hit ratio, but it's not going to stay around for much longer. Body Slam is a great move though, and it helps to take down Bubs' Pokemon. After the Booze Crew set sail, we set forth to take on Lieutenant Surge at the Vermilion City Gym. Grass resists electric, so you can see that Bulbasaur doesn't really have any trouble with Surge's crappy zappers. Crap zappers? Anyways, even Raichu's Thunderbolt barely does any damage, and Body Slam breezes through his entire team with very little effort. After that, I traverse Rock Tunnel in the dark to reach the rival Bubs at the Pokemon Tower in Lavender Town. Bulbasaur has now learned Growth, a move which boosts our special by one stage, and this is an incredible move for Bulbasaur. It conflicts with Razor Leaf, since critical hits ignore stat changes, including our own. But growth does allow for us to badge boost our stats, giving Bulbasaur a little extra attack to make Body Slam do more damage to Bubs' Pokemon. For those who are uninitiated, every time your stats are modified in this game, the stat boosts given by badges are reapplied. Remember that, because it will come into play a lot during this run. Next, we take on Giovanni in the Team Rocket hideout in the Celadon City Game Corner. And just like most gambling sessions, this one is over almost as soon as it began. Razor Leaf 1 it KOs his entire team, and I don't even bother boosting our special with growth, since Razor Leaf usually critical hits anyways. After that, I head straight for the Celadon City Gym to take on the leader Erica, and this battle is completely free. 
Erica's smart AI will try to use super effective moves on Bulbasaur, but she's only checking Bulbasaur's grass typing, so she'll continue to spam Poison Powder despite the fact that Bulbasaur is immune due to being a Poison type itself. So this is a free opportunity to badge boost our attack stat using growth, and after that it's just a waiting game with badge boosted body slams. After the battle, Erica also gives Bulbasaur access to Mega Drain with her Gift TM, and that is huge for the Soar. Next up is Koga at the Poison Gym, and despite the fact that Razor Leaf often critical hits to ignore stat boost, I found that the best strategy here is to still maximize our special with growth and go for Razor Leaf anyways. Sleep Powder helps us set up growths against the coughing, and then after that it's off to the races. For once though, Weezing doesn't try to self-destruct, instead it randomly picks between its three poison type moves, so Koga is also kinda free? And who said Bulbasaur was trash again? This thing is an easy win against six out of the eight gym leaders. You can't really say that for Squirtle, and you sure as hell can't say that for Charmander. Bulbasaur is number one in the Pokedex, and it should also be number one in your hearts. Well, after beating Koga, I head straight to the Sylph Company building to take on the rival Bubs once again. And I kept losing this battle over and over, until I purposely leveled up to manipulate our experience so that we wouldn't level up during the battle. For the uninitiated, Leveling up during the battle resets the additional badge boost that we receive by using growth, and we need the badge boost to speed from Koga's badge in order to be faster than the Alakazam and the Charizard so that we can put them to sleep. Otherwise, fire and psychic type moves destroy our herbaceous boy. Badge boosted body slam does decent damage to the grass resist, while Mega Drain helps to recover lost health for the sore. After the battle with Bubs is the battle with Giovanni, and I don't even need to tell you how this one went. His Nidorino only goes for Poison Sting, for the same reasons that Erika only went for Poison Powder, so it's a free chance to set up our growths and sweep with Mega Drain. Giovanni is not even remotely close to being a problem for the Soar. He might as well be in a different room with how little he's affecting the outcome of this battle. Then again, that might be more of a testament to how awesome Bulbasaur is, versus how crappy Giovanni is. I mean, don't get me wrong, he sucks, but Bulbasaur rocks. After embarrassing Giovanni, I surf on over to the Cinnabar Island Gym to take on Blaine and his Fire-type Pokémon. Fire seems like it might be a bad idea for our Grass-type Bulbasaur, but the alternative is the Psychic-type Sabrina, so neither is great. Plus, I need the badge boost to Special that Blaine's Volcano Badge gives in order to beat Sabrina at this level. So, as long as we maximize our Special with Growth, Sleep Powder, and Mega Drain, our Florosaurus will stay healthy despite Blaine's Fire-type attacks. The badge boost to speed help us avoid getting fire spin locked by the Rapidash, and a fire blast critical hit from Arcanine will still knock us out even at full health. This battle is not free, but we do have the tools we need to get the job done. After Blaine, I head back to the Saffron City Gym to take on Sabrina. Fun little fact for everyone, while it's not the most efficient route, you can get to Sabrina by only going up and down on the warp tiles. I already mentioned this in the Snorlax video, but then again not everybody watches every video. As for the actual battle, I knew this one would be a total breeze with Body Slam, but first I had to badge boost our speed. It's a tricky battle though, because even with the badge boost to special from the Volcano Badge, Kadabra's Psychic is still a range to 1 at KO. Although, once we get badge boosted, Mega Drain does quick work with her Pokemon and we're able to heal our HP back to full, and even though we don't want to KO the Alakazam, it wastes its one chance to attack by using a piddly little Psy Wave instead. Now it's time for Bulbasaur to take on Giovanni in the Viridian City Gym for our final gym badge. It's a really easy battle and I don't even bother manipulating our experience for badge boost. I don't care if we level up during the battle, because Giovanni can't do diddly. I don't even bother putting Rhyhorn to sleep before setting up growths, because Giovanni can't do diddly. At this point, the only chance that Giovanni lasts more than two minutes in this battle is if my Bluetooth controller battery dies. You know what, this battle's already over. Cue the victory music. Seriously, there's nothing he can do. Nothing will help Giovanni last longer, not even thinking about his grandma, baseball, or his grandma playing baseball. <sighs> well, with eight gym badges in hand, the only thing standing between us and the Elite Four is another rival battle with Bubs. And this one is actually difficult for a change. Because short of tacking on another 10 levels here, Bulbasaur can't avoid leveling up before we reach the Charizard, meaning the Charizard will outspeed us no matter what. Pidgeot almost ended everything right away with a critical hit wing attack, but we hang on with 1 HP and set ourselves up for success. Alakazam goes down to a badge boosted body slam, or as I like to call it, a BBBS, which is good because otherwise a critical hit psychic can end the battle. The rest of his Pokemon go down without much trouble, 
except for the Charizard, of course. I'm able to tank a Flamethrower and put it to sleep, but without badge boost because of the level up, we're doing much less damage. Charizard wakes up and then Bulbasaur proceeds to miss two consecutive sleep powders, and we get down to just 11 HP before we're able to crawl back and snatch victory from the Jaws of Defeat. With that behind us, here are the stats going into the Elite Four. They're pretty meh, and the moveset is the same as it has been for a while now. Then again, Bulbasaur has been cracking skulls, so I don't see the need to change anything, really. First up is the Elite Four battle with Lorelei, and you'll notice here that we underspeed and get hit hard with an Aurora Beam. I only set up a few growths here, just enough to knock out the Dugong in two hits. Since I know I'm going to level up against it, I want to save a few growths for after the level up so we can badge boost enough to outspeed the Lapras and avoid taking a Blizzard. With our special boosted to the absolute maximum, we can even take a Jinx's Ice Punch, but Blizzard has a high chance to freeze which is an immediate end to the battle, since there is literally no way to thaw in this game on your own. Lapras still survives the Mega Drain, but Lorelei goes for a Retroactive Super Potion, which is cheating, but who cares, we win! After Lorelei is Bruno, and this battle is a glorified cutscene. You remember how easily we wrecked Giovanni? Yeah, well Bruno is just a glorified buffer Giovanni. Bruno is what you get if you got cast in a Marvel movie and spent the whole year getting absolutely shredded. Bruno leads off with Onix, which is more concerned with raising its defense than actually being a good Pokemon, and a growth boosted Mega Drain one that KOs everything besides the Machamp, but we also resist submission, so there's really nothing Bruno can do to avoid the total spanking we just gave him. Clap those cheeks, y'all. Next up is Agatha, and full disclaimer, this is the first part of the run, which was truly terrifying. I tried this battle dozens of times and got completely stomped because all of her Pokemon resist grass. Then I had a stroke of genius. It's hard to let go of Body Slam, since it's been such a great move for the Sore, but I replaced it with Mimic. And since we already have Sleep Powder, Mimic lets us copy the perfect move to beat Agatha, and that's Dream Eater. It's basically a much stronger, albeit psychic type version of Mega Drain that only works on a sleeping target. With Boosted Special and Dream Eater, we're able to transform what was previously an impossible battle into yet another monumental sweep for the Bulbasaur. For all you clowns who ever doubted Bulbasaur, Exhibit A. This thing is way stronger than you ever gave it credit for. Plus, it always feels good to use Agatha's horribly frustrating tactics against her. How does it feel to be put to sleep, Agatha? Oh, I bet you don't like it very much. How does it feel to be dream eatered, Agatha? Oh, I bet you don't like it very much. Well, you know what? Serves you right. Clearly, Agatha has traumatized me. Next up is the final Elite Four member, Lance, and if you know anything about these runs, you know that Bulbasaur being part poison type means that this battle is essentially a fight against the Gyarados and Aerodactyl only. Well, technically the Dragonite comes into play, but more on that later. Anyways, Dragonair and Dragonite will spam their psychic type status moves against Bulbasaur thanks to Lance's smart AI, meaning they'll never damage us since opposing trainers have infinite PP and can't struggle. First off though, I set up our growths against the Gyarados while also using Mimic to copy Hyper Beam, partly for the firepower, but also for the style points. We one hit KO both Dragonair with badge boosted Hyper Beams, and remember, no recharge turn is required when Hyper Beam picks up a knockout in this game. Aerodactyl goes down without any trouble, but then the Dragonite comes out. Between Lance's healing items and Dragonite's double resistance to grass, Bulbasaur actually runs out of Hyper Beams and Mega Drains before we can knock out the Chubby Dragon. So there's only one thing to do. I have to waste all of Bulbasaur's PP and stall until we can start using Struggle, and just pray that we have enough health left to survive the recoil. That was the longest Lance battle I think we've ever had. Finally, it's time to take on the champion, our rival Bubs, and first off, I use a rare candy to reset our experience to avoid leveling up during the battle. There's no way to avoid leveling up before the Charizard without using all 10 of our rare candies, but I think Bulbasaur can win without the extra levels anyways. Pidgeot does a lot of damage with Wing Attack, but it also gives us the ability to use Mimic to copy Sky Attack. This changes the Alakazam and the Executor from being horrible pain-inducing nightmares to trivial knockouts. Still, this battle hinges on two things, not missing Sleep Powders and avoiding critical hits from Alakazam and Charizard. Having to take so many turns to set up growths means Bulbasaur often takes a lot of damage during these battles. 
But thankfully, Mega Drain keeps Bulbasaur healthy. Sky Attack won it KOs the Alakazam, but it takes two turns to hit. So thankfully, Alakazam doesn't critical hit its Psychic. The rest of Bubs' Pokemon go down without a fight, until the Charizard. Because of our lower level, it takes less experience for us to level up, and right after we knock out the Executor, Bulbasaur gains a level, resetting our badge boost. But thankfully, we still have our special boost from growth, so we just need to avoid a critical hit. It lands a Fire Blast, which thankfully doesn't critical hit, and the Sar puts the Char to sleep, and we start chipping for damage. We get the Charizard low enough to take it out with a Sky Attack, and the Charizard wakes up on the last turn, but it's already too little too late. Bulbasaur tears across the sky in a blaze of glory, knocking out the False Dragon and winning the battle. And with that, the challenge is over, y'all. Let this video stand as a testament to the power of the plant. Bulbasaur deserves your respect as one of the best Kanto starters. Who'd have thought it'd be this good, though? I mean, I bet you never saw it coming, huh? Well, as always, I want to thank you for making it to the end of this video and for surviving that horrible pun. These videos are a lot of fun, but also a lot of work, so I really do appreciate it. There's a playlist on my channel where you can find the rest of my Pokemon Challenge videos if you want to check those out as well. If you're new to the channel, it's a great way to catch up, binge some fun Pokemon content, and also something you can put on in the background as you fall asleep. I've already done most of Kanto, and we're getting ready to start Johto here pretty soon. And if you like this kind of content and want to see more, subscribe and enable notifications so you'll know right away the next time one of these episodes is uploaded. And let me know in the comments what other Pokemon you want to see, and I'll probably do it. Next week, I'm going to continue with the second of the four Generation 1 starters by beating Pokemon Red using only one Squirtle. We're going to find out if I'm turtly enough for the mm, Turtle Club. Anyways, as always, until next time, 